Yeah. All right. We'll skip your yeah. everything. How have you settled in? How what has gone on the last month? And just would you sum up the time since the hiring came official? Yeah. Mainly, it was hiring my staff, trying to figure out who I wanted. Um, you know, with the group, a bunch of interviews that went on. Majority of it is tough because a lot of the good coaches are um, in other organizations, right? And so you're trying to get them. And um, and so luckily, I got who I wanted um, for the most part. Uh, it's almost done. Uh, maybe a couple more hires, but the bench coach is done. The hitting is done. Uh, pitching group was important to keep, and um, so you know, really happy how it all turned out. Which has been the toughest of the positions to fill? Probably the hitting side. Yeah, that took a while to um, to get right, um, and you know, when you're asking for permission, that also is tough. Um, but you know, really lucky we got Brant Brown on board, and to me, you know, the Dodgers are like the envy of most major league offenses, um, and. Uh, you know, him being able to, able to develop our system, not only at the major league level, but at the minor league level, um, it was going to be huge for us, and I'm excited for our guys to start with. Obviously, each guy is different, but what was kind of the certain characteristic that you were looking in each of them to put together your team, and what type of profile you were looking to to have in, in those guys to, to finish your coaching staff? Yeah, first, I wanted a good person. Uh, you have to be high character. Um, I bet on good people for the most part. Um, the baseball stuff, me, good people, then good baseball. Um, and luckily, everybody that we hired has both, and uh, both qualities. So, I mean, I, I don't, I wouldn't, I definitely would not hire a really good baseball guy if they were a bad person. So um, that was important to me. Built-in relationships in some capacity were important. So whether it was I coached with them, played with them, or had a really good uh, friend or former teammate that trusted in this particular coach um, was important to me as well. You mentioned played with them. What role does John Jay play in that? And what, what could he be as an asset? Um, former teammate, knows what winning looks like, World Series champion, um, knows what, uh, I think John, a guy like John Jay has been coaching for the last three or four years of his career, honestly. He's that type of person, knew when to bring in the young guys, get them out early, whether it was the base running or the outfield or talk hitting. Um, John Jay was really important to me, Miami kid, um, lives, he said, 10 minutes away from the stadium, um, had built-in relationships with a lot of the players already. Um, a good friend of mine, I know, I know he knows um, what I'm about, and I think um, is a guy that's going to hold, you know, everyone accountable. And um, I think John Jay is a, a rising star as far on the coaching side, and I'm lucky that um, we got him first. On the, the introductory press conference, you mentioned just how the coaches have to outwork the players. Um, how much of an impact can you guys have as a coaching staff to maybe bump that win total? Let's say for the, let's say the roster stayed the same. Yeah. With those guys, how much of an impact can you guys actually have? Well, that's our job. I mean, our job is to get guys better. I mean, your your job isn't just to show up and watch the game. It's our job is to get whoever players Kim gives us better, um, to get the best version out of them. Um, it's not the easiest thing to do, right? I mean, that's why there's um, so many hires and fires every single year, and that's just the reality of this game. But um, our that's why I hired or we hired the best coaches that I think that can do that. And um, hopefully we can have some you know, really good years out of these kids. You mentioned uh, when we talked to you uh, back in the intro uh, that you were trying to have in the conversations with players. How has the dialogue been going with the roster? What's been your central message to them? And any conversations from the other end, from the players end? That um, a few things. I think there's excitement um, about the um, new coaches that have been hired. Um, I think the majority, not the majority, but a lot of the kids are disappointed in or I keep saying kids, but the kids to me, but uh, um, a lot of the players are disappointed in their years, um, some embarrassed by their seasons, and are looking to, to rebound. And um, I think that's motivation is a scary drug. And I think um, having guys that are uh, upset about their previous year um, is helps a coach because, you know, we see some things that can help them and they're willing to listen. and. Um, not happy about the year before. That that there's not not a, a bad thing about that. That's for sure. Uh, on yeah. the hitting side of things, I think that's where the industry would recognize the Marlins pitching is being among the top, and the hitting was sort of the issue. Uh, bringing in Brandt, is there more of an? Experience? And 
just on the major league side? And what do you think that he could do potentially to help perhaps some of those things? Yeah, I see the hitting as like a hitting department, right? Like I know there's a number one, two, three, or whatever, but I, I really feel like it's a department and this is what we should be doing as an organization and not cookie cut it, but you know, have a real philosophy. Um, Brant has that. Um, First of all, he has good feel. He can talk to you as a player um, and not just like drill you on something and this is how it is and this is how it's going to be. Um, talking with a lot of guys uh, you know, that have played under Brandt as a hitting guy, um, they know that they're going to be super prepared. They know there's certain drills that can help um, with a guy that needs bat speed or the guy that needs to get the ball off the ground, whatever it is. Um, there's different drills for everybody, and I think it, it needs to be an organizational philosophy. And I think Brant is uh, going to be able to, uh, to deliver that for us. You also mentioned um, when you got introduced the importance of having someone who could speak Spanish with the Latin guys by, by having Urueta uh, next to you, how big that's going to be with, with him in that role? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Arizona is a very tough team to play against. They run the bases the right way, they play hard. Um, you have to beat them. Um, they're not going to beat themselves. And, you know, having been in San Diego for a number of years and, and facing Arizona, um, I know what he's all about. Um, I know he holds the guys accountable. Um, I know how he gets the best version of those guys uh, out of them. And so, that was a big hire for me. Um, I respect him, always have. I think he's going to be a big league manager one day. But for right now, um, I have a really good bench coach. And, you know, I, I had such a good relationship with Ali Marmol last year. Um, and, um, you know, you I was searching for that. That's kind of what I wanted. Um, and thank God uh, he was available and I got to get him. Yeah, I learned a lot. I learned a lot about, um, you know, not micromanaging. Um, Ollie was not a micromanager. Um, he let the coaches that he hired coach. Um, the relationship that I had, I didn't know Ollie on a personal level until he hired me and went through the, uh, the hiring process. And I knew right away that, like, if you're going to spend the most time with somebody, you got to really like them and be on the same page. And Ollie and I were on the same page. And, um, my weaknesses were his strengths and vice versa, and um, that's why I think it, it works so well. And that's a lot what I see with Pipe, um, same way um, with, with uh, Louie. And, um, and, but the micromanaging was probably the, the number one thing that I took away. It was like, we hired you to coach, coach, do it well, and you know, we'll see what happens. And that's what, that's what Ollie did, and that's what I took away most from it. Have you know Matt Holiday well? He's stepping in the job you had before. Have you had him talked, and how do you think he'll do it? Yeah, he's going to be terrible. Yeah, there's no way. There's no way he's going to replace me. Uh, um, no, he's he's great. Yeah, I love Matt. Um, he's going to be amazing at it. Um, he could have been a big league you know, bench coach or manager years ago if he wanted to be, and um, you know, what a great spot for him to be in. Um, Obviously, it's a really good team that he, just like I was, got onto last year. I in, inherited that type of team, but um, you know, Matt's only going to make them better. Um, he made me better as a player, and he's going to make every one of those guys play uh, better. Um, so it was a great hire by Ollie for sure. If you know his personality role, well, how different is he going to be as a bench coach than you were as a bench coach? I mean, I mean, you guys share obviously some competitiveness, but yeah, you all not the same. No, I think you know. That seat is different. It just is. You know, I from being a, a player, then jumping on to be a first base coach is different, and then from first base to bench coach is different. So um, it, there's a lot of learning. Um, running a spring training, luckily he's got some guys that can help him. And in, in Pogi's great over there, and um, Stubby is really good at running the infield, and obviously Willie in the outfield. So um, he's got a lot of good guys around him in place that can really help. Um, but Matt is, um, he'll figure it out. He's got good work ethic, good feel. Um, I think the, the challenge, you know, will be just like, you know, bullpen matchups and that kind of thing when, um, you know, when Ollie gets kicked out because he's going to get kicked out and the game gets fast. And, um, and so I think that's going to be, you know, the main challenge is like, you know, how are you going to run a game? But, you know, Matt's going to be fine. He's, he's a pro. Looking ahead a bit, just... You know, when spring training comes around, you have the World Baseball Classic, you got the introduction of new rules. How much of a challenge is that going to be with guys that might be on, you know, a camp, they might be elsewhere? It's going to be a challenge for a rookie manager because I don't know the, the guys yet, right? You can 
you can do a, a bunch of calls and you can go meet with lunches and you but like actually getting your eyes on them in a bullpen or a real game setting it's definitely a challenge at WBC so you got to lean on a lot of the guys that were here um, uh, the front office and their takes and watch the WBC um, so uh, you know I'm excited that they get to join it but as a rookie manager selfishly I'm like why this year you know um, but uh, but we have a lot of guys playing in it I'm excited for them I'm excited for them to come back healthy um, that's number one and then uh, as far as the rules yeah I think every it's new for everybody we have um, Rod Brahas, Griffin Benedict, Jody Reed, um, guys on my staff uh, were in the minor leagues last year um, as far as like the, you know, the run game and the bases and that type of stuff. So, um, you know, I'm going to lean on them and um, try to figure that out just like probably everybody else is trying to figure it out. Skip, what has been the interaction between you and Kim as the offseason goes out trying to figure out the roster stuff and how involved are you with possible decisions and just that that uh, back and forth between you guys trying to yeah to yeah she out. you know I think it's it's always dangerous when a player or plays GM you know I think that's a very dangerous move I try to you know give her um, some ideas and if she asks me questions then I'll give her my take on it um, but you know she's she has a staff built around her that is looking at every way for us to get better um, if there's questions I'll give it to her but I'm not giving her like a list of 10 guys like we have to get in one of these guys that's just not you know my personality it's not my job um, but I'm, I'm here to you know what, what any question she needs obviously I'm gonna give it to her my take yeah, skip a hitting question and a pitching question uh, on the former bringing in a uh, new hitting program was a stronger emphasis on hitting analytics and like body movement profiles a specific focus yeah body movement is is big you know uh, incorporating the training staff with the with the hitting department is is a big big deal um, I know the preparation component is a big deal so the brand checks every single box um, as far as that's concerned analytically you know you give guys what they can handle um, some guys want it all Paul Goldschmidt wanted every single um, heat map in whatever it was possible um, there's other guys that you know were like you know just let me get in the box and hit you know so you got it everybody's different um, and you don't want to over emphasize the analytic stuff if the guy the player um, you know can't digest it okay and on the pitching side uh, top prospect Yuri Perez um, why is he as good as he is and what are your thoughts on quote-unquote fast-tracking young talent in big leagues why is he as good I mean he's got a, a an arm that you can't teach so I mean that's number one he's a big kid and um, uh, re the I would say his delivery is as repeatable as um, as as you want, as simple as you want. And so I think it's going to play uh, and fast track uh, quicker than most. I will say that if a pitcher is ready and he can command the fastball and has pitch command, I think that's number one. Stuff up here doesn't play. It's got to be pitchability and stuff. It's got to be a combination um, because, you know, if you just have stuff and you walk guys, we know we're going to lose. So stuff doesn't mean anything to me as long as if you have to pitch. I think a guy like him can fast track. Um, I think you look at a number of different things, health, number of innings they've had the previous couple of years. Um, and, you know, can he help us win? Does he help us win in the bullpen? Does he help us win the rotation? You know, what's that look like moving forward? But um, I, I don't, I think it's, you know, you can't just rush him right now to say he's going to be, you know, in the rotation or in the bullpen. We are really excited about where he's at. Skip, if you look at the NL East at large, uh, you saw what top three teams making the playoffs last year. A couple of top teams are making some big moves here. You see what the payrolls are. What's the challenge of that on your side to be able to compete in the division? And what, where do you get the confidence that you guys can compete in the East? Yeah, I, mean, I still still really like our rotation. I think that I know we're, we just had a... Um, our staff in the room in the suite and going over you know a lot of the new coaches that came over going over our pitching staff and our pitching staff is real right the depth is real I think the challenge for us is um, you know keeping guys healthy is number one number two is you know what kind of depth do we have last year in St. Louis we had New Bar and Donovan came up a lot right um, you know, we had guys that came up if in case we were hurt uh, in case guys were hurt, we had guys ready. Um, do we have enough big league guys ready in AAA or AA, you know, to help us, you know, at the major league? 
Um, we have to nail the PD side. The player development has to be good and has to get better. That's just the reality. When you, you have a payroll like we have, competing against monsters in the in the East, um, you know we have to really be good at the guys. Um, that's you know what I took away a lot from my St. Louis days is we had a lot of St. Louis guys on the field every single day. Um, it wasn't just a bunch of big name free agents, and so we have to be really good at that part. Um, but you know, getting our own guys better. I mean, that's just the reality. We have to get better. Um, and um, hopefully I hired the, the right staff around me to do that. Do you think a schedule that increases the amount of games played within the division and fans it out more will end up offering a truer kind of representation of, of a team? I think it's really good for the fans, that's for sure, for everybody to come in and, um, and see different teams play. Um, but yeah, I, I do think it's, I, I liked interleague when I was a player, I liked interleague as a coach and you get to see the other divisions and other ballparks and see where you stack up and it's not just in the playoffs. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's great for the fan base. It's not great for the coaches because you got to now game plan against 29 other teams. Um, uh, so it's a lot more work. Um, but as far as like the players getting excited to play different teams, different stadiums, yeah, I think it's I think it's great all the way around. Skip, you have a couple of guys <clears throat> playing down there in the Dominican and other in the Caribbean. How much are you following that, and, and how important is, how important you think it could be for them to play the whole season there, knowing also that you played Winter Ball? So yeah, Winter Ball is important. I think it's important. I think everybody should play Winter Ball. Um, it helped me in my career. Um, you know, Sanchi down there. It's it's going to be a big winner for him. Um, uh, De La Cruz is having a nice year down there. Uh, I, I, there's there's guys that um, I don't think it tells the whole story. If you have a bad winter league, it's not like oh you're not going to be good in spring training. But I think it's important to get down there and um, and play against it, bigger crowds, uh, tough competition. Um, so I think all that is important, especially if you're young in your career. I went when I was in Double A, um, so I think that part is really important. But um, I don't think it tells the whole story if you have a bad winner. It's not like you're, it just carries over and have a, uh, a bad season. Have you identified, you said a few guys were sort of, I think you used the word embarrassed about the season they had last year. Is there a that you've identified maybe as a bounce back candidate for, for 2023 or was it still early before? Yeah, no, uh, Avi was, is one of those guys that's not happy about how his, how his season went. And, um, you know, he felt like he, you know, wasn't in shape enough to, to play a full season um, and came in um, not ready uh, for, uh, you know, like he should have been, you know, could have been the lockout, a number of different things. Um, but I feel like he's the number one guy that I'm most excited about, had dinner with him. Um, he looks great. He's been hitting already. Um, he's been working with John Jay and the outfield stuff already. So um, the guy is extremely motivated um, and not real happy about how his season went about and um so i'm looking forward to see what he looks like in spring skip some of those yes, cardinal, two more questions some of those cardinal guys said they're looking forward to trash talking you and the other guy <laughs> in spring training what do you think spring training will be like you know facing that team six seven times or whatever? yeah i expect to win every single game uh, <laughs> uh, no it's going to be fun i mean a lot of those guys they're all friends right i mean they're all buddies of mine and um we had such a good run a fun season last year, um, lifelong friends, and um, so a, a healthy uh, trash talk is, is a good trash talk, and uh, you know, we'll have a lot of fun in spring training. Have you ever gone through the other entrance of Roger to the stadium? No, no, it's gonna be for uh, no, that's it, it's an instructional <laughs> league, maybe but that was it, like that was a long time in 2001, so maybe, but uh, no, it's been a long time. We're good, thank you, Thanks. good, Thanks. all right, guys. Thanks. Yep. Yep.